Hello, and welcome. My name is Kevin. This is Do It For Bruce. We're here in CK3 once more with another time lapse. Thank you to Nectarios Pizzilicio for suggesting this one. Usually we buff, expand, we improve upon rulers who uh, are running these. This time we've decided the Byzantine Empire is going to be taken down a rung. Uh, we've made the Empire himself a hideous, imbecile, feeble man who also is immortal as well as uh, has a negative uh, 100 stress gain. And then we've done all this same things to all of his direct vassals who are a duchy or a county lord or, or higher, minus the, the ecumenists. So everybody is ugly, they're dumb, and they're feeble. But they're also mortal. So we'll see how well they will be able to... We'll see how well they'll be able to handle these challenges that are coming their way with such low stats and... Uh, such feeble bodies and minds high likely chance that not a single one of them will be in power debuff that is coming from imbecile uh they will be completely ousted from power but my guess out of the i think it's let's see 30 yes it was 31 vassals who are uh, subjugated to this 15 will survive i think 15 with the extra stress relief will really keep them alive in the long run uh, i think orthodox will be one of the more primary faiths just because uh, with immortals around you have a lot of higher likely chance of uh, expanding and improving but who knows but that's all i have to say about that so we'll see you in the post after the silence
All right, here we are in the post. We are now uh, 400 years into the future. We will see where our immortals are at. Um, but before that, let's just zoom around the map and see any sort of interesting thing that is going on uh, here in there. Oh, I thought this was going to be a kingdom, but it is actually a peasant revolt. Uh, the High Chieftain of Cornwall? He's a clan. Ah, uh, the Westphalians are a thing. Uh, Lapland has lapped over Sweden. Crazy to mention, except for it looks like we have some Orthodox as far as Ob or Siberia. Um, yeah, usually the East isn't that interesting because people just there's not that many callouts unless we specifically did something here, and uh, mostly everybody plays in the West. So that's. That's what my two cents on that. Let's see if our emperor survived and or how many our immortals survived. We'll start with seeing if the if the original emperor is still kicking. It looks like our boy is still kicking. He has uh, been downgraded severely from a emperor to a baron of some random county in... Okay, so he's not moved that far from the capital, but he's just in charge of this random baronry. Uh, He's alive. His son, who was in charge of some land, is not alive. Let's see all the immortals and see how many are left. I said there were about to be 15 left, and we will see that there are two. Oh my. Seems like uh, our friends did not do as well as we thought they would. But let's now look around the territories and see what happened. The different duchies and stuff like that and see what happened to our our characters and see w where they've ended up and how they ended up. He was killed because he was executed by the emperor's son. This man was murdered by some random person. Uh, that makes sense. With with all these negative, literally all your traits being in zero, uh, you have a higher likely chance of not really being able to do much. So your general opinion's bad, your levies are rough, you pay less, you get less in taxes, you pretty much can't defend yourself, and you're very much unlearned. He uh, was slain in battle. So, uh, you know, that's that sucks that he was... <laughs> Again, like, when you have zero stats, you can't really complain when you die. But looks like we did actually have one successful ruler. He eventually became the king of Hellas. Uh, I don't know how he managed that with the 00330. Uh, he was known as the bully, and his uh, reason of death was committing suicide, which I thought with the watch spiff, that would definitely remove any sort of stress gain, because it's minus 100 stress gain. Uh, so somehow he still was able to end it all, unfortunately, uh, maybe due to the melancholy or some other uh, turn of event. Even with all the hindrance of all these different immortals, uh, the Empire was able to expand and become uh, pretty mighty for uh, having pretty bad people at the helm, but it's possible what happened is most of them probably got ousted pretty quickly, if not instantly, as soon as the game started because they had such low, low, low stats. There's that for our immortals uh, running this Empire. Let's go through quickly and see how faith went down uh my guess it looks like catholics are catholicism is still the dominant faith but orthodox in a tight third um just behind sunni ashari culture is oh hungarian is pretty big dang boy why are you so thick uh but greek pretty big as normal andalusian dominant english was created kingdom titles uh Looks like some more expansive kingdoms, the Westphalians, the Frisians. So there's Galicia, Galicia, and Clan Galicia, Galicia. So that's that's fun. Uh, you know, everybody's getting into the Galician uh, spirit for sure. Let's look at the Empire title. Uh, France expanding. But uh, one more thing. We'll look at development. See if there's anything to call out. Nope. Pretty, pretty much the standard fare. Nothing... Uh, maybe a little more yellow over here and in this area, but everything feels still pretty average uh, development wise. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. That stuff always helps get the channel out there. And as always, keep those suggestions coming for time lapses and uh, whatever else you'd like to see on the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.